Every once in a while I like to check up on the traditional Catholics. Uh, there's a couple different channels that are on YouTube that are pre-Vatican II Catholics. <clears throat> they reject all the ecumenical council stuff that happened in the 1960s. Second Vatican Council, which I have right here. These guys reject this. They, uh, they think that we are heretics. Bible-believing Christians are heretics. They believe that we should be eliminated. Um, so they consider themselves the true Catholic you know, system, and they are, because that's what Catholicism really is. Second Vatican Council is a smokescreen that will eventually go away when the Antichrist shows up especially, but I think even before then. But um, he says something very interesting in this video. This is Michael Matt of the Remnant uh, TV Remnant system. They put out a newspaper and everything else. But um, listen to what he says here. It's very interesting. See that even in the movies, the exorcists, no matter what, they're always consulting the Catholic. You know, they're always speaking in Latin. Bad guys or you know, devils enter the little girl, the little boy, and everybody, Catholic or not, go get a Catholic priest because they're the ones that have the power. And they come in and they speak Latin. I don't think so. <laughs> but, right? To drive the demon, even in the movies. Why? Well, it's because according to every exorcist I've ever read, the devils actually hate Latin. And do you know why they hate Latin? And here's where you're probably going to have to brace yourselves. According to exorcists, the reason devils hate Latin is because Latin promotes unity. Yeah, you heard that right. And that's a little shocking, isn't it? Because for the past year or so, what have we heard? We've heard the exact opposite from Pope Francis, who says the Latin Mass is divisive. He's got it almost demonically inverted. You see, because the reality is Latin promotes unity among the members of Christ's mystical body throughout the world, in the past, in the present, and in the future. Mm. In the future, uh, watch out for that. I did a series of studies, by the way, on the whole thing of exorcism, showing that it's fake. I'll show you here really quickly. Um, right there it is, Deliverance Exorcism in the Bible, Part 1, and I have Part 2. Um, I'll put the links to them at the end of this video. You can watch that. But uh, Latin in the future is going to bring everybody together. Hmm. Genesis chapter 11 uh, and the Lord God, or, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, "Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Um, one language. Where's that at in Scripture?" Oh, the, the church is the mystical body of Christ is held together with one language. Past, present, and future, the Antichrist system. Look out for that. Uh, Latin is the is one of the languages used by ancient Rome. It's an important thing for them. A lot of the military orders and things of today, just like military was one of the biggest aspects of ancient Rome. So too today, here in America, we are the center, kind of the hub for modern-day Rome, the temporal side of Rome. The spiritual Roman power is, of course, at the Vatican. But the temporal power, we use Latin, Semper Fi, Semper Fidelis, the uh, marine motto. A lot of different Latin types of things. And there's this big thing right now within the Catholic Church about Latin mass versus just doing it in the language of the people and whatever else. But the trad cats are calling for one language to unify the entire mystical body of Christ. You know anything about Bible prophecy? You know where that's going. <laughs> okay, the uh, reestablishment of the Catholic Church. Okay, let's continue here. The reality is Latin promotes unity among the whole of the communion of saints who stand united together against the world, the flesh, and the devil. And guess what? Disunity is what the devil is all about. Disunity. He divides, he scatters, 
he confuses. No, I'm not talking about the Pope here. I'm talking about the devil. Okay. Division. He divides. Um, he divides. He scatters. Really? Suppose ye, Jesus speaking, suppose ye that I am come to that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. Huh. The devil, I mean, do you think he might have a little bit backwards here? Um, the devil brings division. We have to be unified under one language. Uh-oh. Uh, all the Bibles, the King James Bible, it's not important. You know, you don't have to be real concerned about having the Bible and knowing the Bible Everything's fine, you know, whatever. You see how easily you could get deceived? Let's let's come together. Let's have unity. The devil divides. And the devil does divide. I mean, it, uh, please understand that. The, you know, there's divide and conquer type of stuff that the devil does. But you also have to remember, if you believe the truth, you have to divide from the lost world. That's the division there that this passage is speaking about. And... You know, what Jesus Christ set up is not what the Catholic Church has done. The Catholic Church has added to the Scriptures, added lots of things to the Scriptures that are completely without any ba backing from the Bible. So, watch out for this stuff. But let's continue. I'll finish up the video here. Confuses, divides. Do you know his name? Devil is from the Greek, diabelin, to throw apart. And he, he hates the fact... That uh, a Catholic wouldn't go to the Greek, would they? You just heard one. But Latin, friends, isn't this something? The devil hates the fact that Latin unifies the one holy Catholic and apostolic church of Jesus Christ. Unifies them, us all. Okay. Where does the Bible say that? Any Bible, including the old Latin Vulgate which came before the Jerome's Latin Vulgate. Where does it say we're supposed to be unified with one language? It doesn't. And when they were unified with one language, God came down and broke it up. And you see the Lord there, and, he, uh, and the, they're speaking in tongues in Acts chapter 2 when the church is just beginning, and they're speaking in different languages, not just one. Continue against him <laughs> now do you begin to understand what's really going on here oh I really understand what's really going on here yes I do we must resist Francis to his face because Francis also hates Latin and I fear it's for the same reason you know let me just say this um, to traditional Catholics if you're watching you do need to resist Francis I would agree with that because Francis is a Jesuit. Jesuits are not supposed to be popes. And the Jesuit order has made a mess of the Catholic Church. Okay, that's why one of the popes, I forget which one it was, but it was back in the 1800s, I think 1870 or so, right around there, he actually disbanded the Jesuit order. Okay, so yes, I would agree you have to resist Francis, but it's because he's a Jesuit. You should fight against the Jesuit order. If you really want to fight something, that's what you do. These guys will never mention that. Friends, this is it. Do not comply. Do not let them take the traditional Latin Mass out of your life, out of this world, ever again. Our souls depend on it. The souls of your children depend on it. Your souls depend on it? Really? Uh, you don't understand the Bible. Death, burial, resurrection. That's the gospel. Your soul doesn't depend on the Latin Mass. There's no scripture for that. The future of the whole world depends on the preservation of the traditional Latin Mass. And by the way, what he's saying here is prophetic. It will come true. They will force people to take partake in the Latin Mass, I believe, in the time of Jacob's trouble. You take the Mass, you take the mark upon the forehead, which they already do, 
Okay, Revelation chapter 20, Revelation 13 says Mark is in the right hand or in the forehead, but Revelation chapter 20 also says upon the forehead. Catholics already are taking it. Ash Wednesday, they have a mark upon the forehead. All right, so understand this whole thing, the, the, the future of the world and everything else. They will bring this system in. I do believe it's prophecy. And you're seeing it right now. They're already setting the stage for this thing, in other words. Let's finish up. I don't want to stay, Christe. Okay. All right, I don't need to hear the Latin hocus pocus stuff, which, <laughs> if you understand that too, it is from that. But um, just wanted to put this video together here just to show this thing. Keep an eye on these trad cats. Um, Catholicism is not what Jesus Christ started, it's not the church that he started. It is a wicked, satanic system all right so stay away from catholicism if you are a catholic you need to get saved you are not in christ's church you're not part of his body you are in satan's church that's going to be it thank you for watching